Hello people, and welcome back to the updated, updated version of How to Start Your City for 2020. This is a re-upload, I decided to delete the old version and decided to produce my own version of How to Start Your City and uh, not credit Imperial Jedi's version anymore. So today we're going to be looking at a nice new start to the city and uh, this is really going to be kind of a beginner's guide. People with experience of city skylines may find this a little bit slow, but maybe you'll pick up a couple of tips along the way as well. We are playing with all major expansions from After Dark and Snowfall, Natural Disasters, Green Cities, basically everything up until Campus. Uh, we're not playing with Concerts, which is a mini expansion, so everything, all the content creator packs, um, most of them aren't there as well, but you can kind of see uh, what I have installed here on the left hand menu if you're interested. In terms of mods, there are a couple active, unlimited oil and ore, just so I don't have to move any oil or ore areas. For those that don't know, the oil and ore industry will deplete over time as you extract the resource. This is very annoying because it kind of makes placing large industrial areas specialising in those two types of industry very off-putting because you have to keep moving them once the resource expires. So I'm playing with it on, you don't have to, it's not important and it won't affect the guide. And unlimited soil so we can landscape without limits as it so nicely describes but again it is not essential for this guide. We are of course playing on Eden Valley because it's the best map in the game. It comes with the Green Cities DLC. However, this guide will apply to every single map in the game, regardless whether that's Workshop, DLC, or base game, Vanilla. So Eden Valley for me, and let's go. Okay guys, so the game has loaded up, and the first thing we are going to do is pause the game. On PC, this can be done by hitting the little pause icon down here, which has play and pause, or hitting the space bar. And for console users, you can pause your game by clicking your left stick down once, and that will pause the flow of time. And we are greeted with two little highway roads right here that are just ready, waiting to be expanded. So the reason we pause our game is because as we place roads, if we hover over them in our roads tab, we can see that they have a very small upkeep cost per week. Now that's per cell. So 0.32 dollars or simoleons, whatever you want to call that currency, it might not seem a lot, but as you place them, that will soon rack up, and at the minute we are making no money, so we have no means of paying for those roads. So, keep the game unpaused for the time being, and we are going to start. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw out a little road, place it, and then delete it, and that is going to unlock the two-lane one-way road, which is the one that we want to be using today. And then... If you are playing with left hand drive on, you can just mirror this, you know, it, it won't make a difference. Uh, I'm just playing with right hand drive. And from this initial point here, I'm going to come out by a total of 20 blocks or tiles. And you know how you can count them by when we move our road tool back and forth, we can see the secondary blue line appear in front of us. When you reach that, that is a marker of 10. So. When it appears, you have 5, that would be 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to come out by a block of 20 and leave it there. And then using this little dotted blue line that is appearing because we have our road guideline snapping on, that is what this line is referring to, we're going to come back and draw it in the opposite direction. So two perfectly parallel roads that are going to flow together with, like, with each other like that. Nice and simple so far, hopefully. Then we're going to come ahead and switch into our medium road. And we're going to zoom in as close as we can here. So we're using the, the four lane road right now, which is the only medium road we have unlocked. So we can see as we kind of hover around the edge of these two roads that we just placed, we can see two very faint blue lines just in, in the either side of this blue circle. And as we move on to them, they do snap on. You know, they're road guideline snap points like we used a moment ago. And I'm going to bring this up just, and I'm going to line it up in the middle as best as I can, leaving about three light blue dashes beneath the circle. Hopefully that makes sense. So you can see between this road that I'm about to place and the roads that we placed, there's about three light blue dashes. They're very faint, uh, but you can just about see them. So about that much distance away. And then I'm going to draw this road straight up by about 
the cost of 360 and again I'm making sure that I'm still in line with these road guidelines you can see the very light blue circles uh, just at the top of the road and I'm going to place it about in there so essentially this road you're placing it in the middle of this one here you want to line it up as best as you can and you'll have something that looks a little bit like that it's really easy and from this point again I'm going to come out by a cost of 540 which is nine tiles it's very easy and then we're going to come back into our one-way road switch over to our freeform tool which is this little icon down here on the PC and I believe that our console friends can switch their road tools uh, using their Y or triangle button depending on the console and then we're just going to come out here just a little bit and then we're going to snap on and then we'll see this snap point here we're snapping onto the road guideline where it turns darker blue and bring them in and then again we're going to change the direction which is on PC using the upgrade tool and then right clicking and again for console users you guys have your own um, change direction tool within the triangle or Y uh, control menu alright so right now you have something that looks like that it's very very basic at the minute but don't worry I promise it is going somewhere then we're going to come in and grab to our intersections menu and we're going to use this small roundabout and we're going to plonk this right on the end of the road that we just placed right here and then we're going to delete the two lane road that snaps with the roundabout we're going to get rid of that and then we're going to get rid of this first section of road that we placed which is a cost of 405 now we will lose a little bit of money from placing and dropping roads in um, but it's a very small amount and don't worry it won't affect you in the long run so you'll have something that looks a little bit like that right now we have this gap that we need to bridge between the two and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to come down to our elevation step, which is this little icon down here. So this refers to how uh, big the incline is between each elevation. So on the page up and down keys on the keyboard will raise and lower your road so you can create bridges or tunnels. Just like that. Really simple. Page up to go up, page down to go down. And I believe for console users, you guys, it's the D-pad that will raise and elevate your roads. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure on the console controls. Okay, so now we have something that looks a little bit like this. We're going to come back to this road right here. And we're going to draw out just by another 180. Just so we're a little closer to the roundabout for what we're about to do. Now down here in the bottom left, there is a step tool called Elevation Step. And what this is referring to is the incline that your page up and down keys will jump up by. So at its tallest, it'll do very big jumps. The middle, slightly smaller jumps. And at the lowest point, very, very small inclines. So it's a distance of three, nine, and six meters respectively. Kind of, you know, small, medium, and large. And we want it on the lowest one. I believe console players, um, you guys raise and lower your roads by, paid, by uh, the D-pad, I think. Not 100% sure on the console controls. If I am wrong, please let me know in the comments so uh, console player can find out. I am mainly PC. Um, yeah, so we've drawn this road out. We now have something that looks a little bit like this. And then we're going to come out up until the roundabout, but we are not going to snap on here. We're going to come back by another single tile. And then we're going to raise up by three steps, which is a cost of 1670 or 11 tiles and we'll have a nice little smooth bridge that's going to flow right into the middle of our roundabout we're also going to delete this road here and uh, we'll delete this one for right now as well whilst we are here so right now the roundabout kind of looks like um i don't know kind of like like a ping pong uh like a ping pong racket i guess a paddle i guess is the word <laughs> uh, okay so we're going to have our bridge right here and then there's something that we need to do before we draw this bridge over the roundabout. So roundabouts in city skylines, unless you don't, if you snap onto any of these node points here, which are represented by these blue circles, then it will stay the same shape. However, if you draw off in an angle like this direction that isn't on one of these node points, it will deform the roundabout. It'll kind of bend it out. People playing with move it, you can just move it back in, but for everybody else without move it, it will cause you an issue 
of misshapen and ugly looking roundabouts, it will not be a fun time. So there's one thing we can do to prevent that. We're going to come and grab any of our regular small roads and we're going to draw a plus symbol in the middle of the roundabout, like that. And what that's going to do is it's going to lock the roundabout in shape so no matter what roads we draw out of here, it's not going to change the shape of the roundabout. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, just draw a plus symbol in the middle of your roundabout like this from one snap node to the other, kind of north to south and east to west. Yeah, okay. And then we're going to come back over to these roads that we made here. And we can see this point right here. This is the uh, the 20 node marker. So no, this is the, uh, the 10 node marker that we placed out. You can see these little blue circles. We're going to come ahead and grab our one way roads again. And we're going to click on that. And then we're going to drag him up so he's parallel with the 20 node marker. And you can see we're just snapping onto it there. Those little dotted blue lines. You want to be at a cost of 440 and right up alongside it like that. So you're going to have a road that comes off in this direction like that. And then we're going to repeat the same again from that same snap mode on the other side. We're going to come up by cost of 440, snapping onto the same point. And then we're going to come in a little bit like that. Okay, so from the bird's eye view, your little road network is looking like this for right now. Looks very strange at the moment, I know, but don't worry. It will, it will come together, I promise. And then we're going to carry this on. Um, up until this point here, which is uh, where the bridge starts. Don't worry, we will come back and change the directions once we've finished up. And then we're going to come onto our roundabout and grab our snap node. So if you kind of think halfway between this point and this point, you want to be a little bit over halfway in favour of this point here. So that'll be halfway, about there. Go a little bit further up and about there and come off. And then snap onto that point there and then we can change our directions. Okay, so the road is flowing into the roundabout, everyone's happy. And we're going to repeat the same on this side as well. So we're going to come out of the roundabout, a little bit kind of down here, a little bit further up, maybe a little bit further again. There we go. And then of course, change our directions, boom. And you'll have something that looks a little bit like that right now. So we have hooked people into the roundabout. And they can also carry on straight forward over our little bridge here that we are going to complete. So you can now delete the plus symbols in the middle of the roundabout. And come back and grab your four lane road. And then we're going to drag this bridge from one side straight to the other. At a cost of 2, 4, 80. And that's going to bring the bridge perfectly in the middle of the roundabout. We have a pillar right here, a pillar in the middle, and a pillar right here again. Now a nice little tip to make sure that we get a nice symmetrical slope on this side as we did here. We can come to the highest point of the bridge where it starts right here, click on it, and then drag back down to the bottom and we can see that that was a cost of 1670. If we do the same here, click and drag and then come all the way back down with our page up and down keys at a cost of 1670 that's going to give us a, a nice smooth perfectly symmetrical bridge that flows over a roundabout so if you're bothered about symmetry that's a nice little tip you can use to kind of you know just make nice looking roundabouts and stuff also works for other types of roads as well uh, and then i'm going to come out by 600 and then i'm going to switch into some more roads so we're going to go ahead and grab our two lane one way road again now. And this is going to be really nice. We're going to draw out by 10. And again, we know we're at 10 because we can see this second blue line as our marker. We're going to click onto that. Okay. And then again, this little circle is also representing 10. So we can see we're going to drag up and out to that. We're going to have two one way roads that poke out at the bottom of the bridge. And what's that, what that's going to do is just make sure that the entrance into what will be our industrial area is going to stay really nice and free and people will be flowing out into the area and people leaving have a nice clear run back over the bridge and onto the highway and then we're just going to draw in some very very simple uh, kind of gridded squares for our industrial area to use just like that just really simple squares snapping onto each of these 10 markers 
Very, very simple. And I'm going to draw this guy up by another 10 as well, just to keep expanding. And then again, we're going to draw in a one-way road here, just like that. And then another one, then like that. So you can see on each side of this main road, the one-way systems are flowing against one another. That's what you want. Okay. So now we're going to come and build our commercial and residential area. So we're going to come to our upgrade road tool and we're going to upgrade this little lone road here, which is the only road left from the initial roundabout, into a nice big four lane. Hopefully that's nice and easy for you guys to follow. Okay, so the distance between there and the roundabout is 420. And then we're going to come and drag this by a distance of 2820, which is all the way here. So from this point to this point, sorry, from uh, that one to that one, 2820. Nice big long main road, and this is going to kind of serve as uh, one of the main veins within the city. Okay. And then from this first snap point here, so again the distance with uh, small roads between the roundabout and the main road is 280. Again we're just doing that drag and drop method again to measure distances between the two. We're just going to come down into some very simple grid patterns, but rather than doing the 10 here, what I want to do is come down by 11, which I will need to snap off my road guideline tool here. So that would be 10, and then 11. Okay. Then I'm going to go out by 10 and back up to the main road. And then what we're going to do now is do intervals of 10. So the road layouts I'm using here are very, very basic grid patterns. And I will talk about why that is in a moment. Because as, as a beginner's guide, grids are always a sensible option for you. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of see how that works as the city expands and grows uh, for this video. Okay, so I'm going to give myself a lot of room for some initial residential uh, zoning, which is going to be really helpful. Okay, so kind of as your general road layout initially, this is what you should be looking at. We've got enough uh, room for zoning and it will come back and expand a little bit further as well uh, once we kind of place in our utility services. So first of all, our sims are going to need electricity, so I'm going to grab them a coal power plant and I'm going to place this right on this one-way road as people come into the industrial estate. Yeah, that's going to give them power. It has an upkeep cost per week. It also has uh, pollution, both noise and ground pollution, uh, both of which our sims do not like to live near. And it also its just kind of you know, generally a bad thing. And um, it also has a power output, which you can see in the bottom right of its little pop-up there. And that's going to be producing a certain amount of power, obviously. So we have uh, power in right now. So now we're going to introduce some water pumping facilities into these guys. And I'm going to place these on a river, obviously, because we need uh, water to come from somewhere. So you notice as we come into our water tab, all the map turns white, apart from the water on the map. You can see the little ocean over here as well is blue. And these arrows that are on the river, you can see they kind of vary in size. The bigger the arrow, sorry, well, what they are indicating is the flow of the water. So the water is currently flowing this way. The river is flowing all the way out of here and then out into the ocean beyond. So the bigger the arrow, the heavier the flow, if that makes sense. So I'm going to place my water pumping station, which is going to suck water up for my sims to drink and brush their teeth with and make meals. And then we're going to place a drain pipe, which is going to flush all of their raw sewage back into the water. However, you want to make sure that your water drain pipe right here, this has to be downstream from the water pumping station. Because if it's upstream, it's going to throw raw sewage out into the water and it's going to flow down and back into your water pumping station. And then you're going to be forcing your sims to kind of drink their own raw sewage as they kind of live in your city. <laughs> it's not particularly nice, so uh, avoid that if you can. Uh, well, not if you can, you should avoid that at all costs because it will make your sims sick. Okay, so next thing we need to do is link them together with water pipes. Now, they will share the same water pipe. You don't need one pipe for sewage and one pipe for water. 
doesn't really make sense but it saves us placing two different kinds of pipe and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this guy all the way down and we can see as we drag these pipes they have a blue aura uh, around them and what that is referring to is the water catchment area so any tiles caught within this blue aura will be classed as watered and will receive water and sewage and any outside of those blue auras will not so yeah you want to make sure that most of your well, all of your squares that you plan to build on uh, are zoned up with this blue aura stuff okay so there are two ways you can carry on placing your water pipes you can kind of just draw them to follow the roads kind of as you go around like this and that's what I do but it is very inefficient because you're going to get a lot of overlap However, I think there was a comment in the last episode um, of this, and a distance of 440 from one node to the other. So you can see we're referring to the cost here. So a cost of 440, like this. And then if you drag this down, and then from this point on again, you're going to get very little overlap. I think it might actually be 460. We'll try it on this side. So coming out by 460. Yeah, so 460. So we're referring to the distance here to here is 460. That's going to give you the least amount of overlap between two pipes. If you want to be ultra efficient and uh, not have to worry about any of that stuff, then you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so right now, uh, let's go ahead and make sure that our... Uh, let's go ahead and measure the distance out here, 460. I know it's there. Wonderful. That's going to water up my industrial area nicely. And then I'm going to come into my electricity. And we need to power everything up right now. So power is being emitted from the power station. And we need to draw some power lines in. So. Right over there. See that this guy. He's within that blue aura. So he will carry power once we play the game. Then again I'm going to need something similar. Over to my water pumping stations so I'm going to drag power line out here and all the way over to these guys one to there and then one to there don't worry they look very ugly but they are just temporary until we start building okay so that is kind of the very initial start but don't worry we are going to be going for a little while longer yet expanding and then giving you a nice solid start to the town but let's just have a little look so all of our one-way systems are flowing in the right direction and I'll kind of explain the uh, the thought process here. So as people come off the highway, our sims and commercial trucks are going to be able to drive through here and hook on to uh, the, the high street where we're going to place our commercial and the residential. However, the industrial traffic that causes a lot of traffic because it's big heavy trucks and there's quite a lot of them, they're going to enter the city and they're going to head down this road instead and they're going to bypass all of our industrial and residential traffic and come into the industrial sector right here. You'll see how it works once we get some flow. And I've just realized that we still need to place a road that we haven't placed just yet. Uh, we need to place in a road for our residential workers uh, to actually get through um, into the industrial site. So from this point here, where we enter the roundabout and the residential road start, I'm going to come in and draw in a little bit of road like that. I've also got a bit of cash left over, so let's go ahead and zone in some more road tiles. Again, I'm just going to stick to these nice, even um, 10 by 10 grids, which is going to give us 8 by 8 tiles in the middle. Uh, I'm going to skip a little intersection right here, so I'm not going to connect every single tile up to the high street, because that produces lots and lots of traffic, uh, which is not particularly ideal. Okay, so let's go ahead and zone in. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about the zoning kind of as it happens. So we are now going to hit play and you'll notice that our weekly income will now start rocketing through the floor because of all that stuff we just placed and we need to get some uh, sims in. So using our zoning tab we can see that we have residential, commercial and industrial. Residential and commercial are low density and there is also high density versions of those available once you unlock them and also office zoning as an alternative to industrial zoning as well. There are four ways we can place this, either by filling in, which will fill all adjacent tiles next to each other, so it's kind of like a fill paint bucket tool. 
We have a marquee, which is a square, which allows you to paint out very specific shapes, kind of of your zoning. You can also, if you zone by uh, left clicking and dropping, you can also unzone by right clicking and dropping like that. And then lastly, there is a couple of different sizes of paintbrushes that you can kind of paint out like that. And again, right clicking will also unzone them for you. Okay. I'm going to use the marquee, which is the square one, because it gives me much more control. And we're going to talk about some strategic little zoning details you can do right now to make your city look better towards the end of its life cycle. So I'll kind of explain here. We have a nice big back-to-back -back grids here. I'm going to draw in a nice big chunk of residential and a little bit along here as well. Okay, and we'll play the game on three speed, which can be done with three on the uh, on the keyboard. And you'll notice that we get four by four in here. So we can see here, nice even four by four tilings. That's actually not what I wanted to happen. <laughs> we, well, that is what I want to happen, but you'll kind of see what I mean here in a moment. Let's draw in some more. Uh, you don't want to be too fast expanding with your commercial, because it can, um, sorry, with your residential, because you'll suffer from something called a death wave which is where a lot of sims move in at the same time and therefore a lot of sims will die at the same time so you want to do it nice and steadily and slowly okay this is exactly what I'm talking about so you can see how we have a 4x3 tile uh, house generated in here you can see it's 3 tiles deep by 4 wide this is fine however the reason we place the roads like this is because the largest the house will grow is 4x4 four four, and you can see that we have perfect 4x4 four four tiles right in our zonings like this. So this is the reason I've placed them into the grid pattern. It's going to be much more aesthetically pleasing for you to have 4x4 four four tiles, 4x4 four four houses within these tiles. So there is something that we can do to help this. We're going to draw in 4 and then we're going to draw in the 4 in the opposite corner and leave these two empty until these two have grown. I'll show you what I mean. So again, we'll do it here. Four in one corner, four in another. We can see that one's grown and that one's grown. So now we can fill in the other four. Now that one's grown. I'm going to do another four here. Another one there. I see this one's grown as well. And then we'll do another one here as well. And another one here. And another one here. If you're, if you're happy with lots of kind of misshapen, mismatched houses, then go ahead and just zone in the whole thing in one go. But if you like to, if you would like to make your city look a little more detailed and a little more kind of thoughtful, and without using kind of any major overhaul mods, then this can be a great way of doing it. So let me know what you think of that. Again, you see these two have grown in now, so I can fill in the next set. It takes a little bit longer, but it, it's not really that much longer. Uh, I'm sure you'll agree. And we'll start slowly watching our little neighbourhood come to life here, which is very nice. So we now have a little bit of commercial demand, which is represented by this little blue bar just starting to sneak out from the bottom of the screen. So now let's place in some commercial zoning. Now I'm going to place my commercial zoning along this main road here. You know, treat this as kind of like an avenue uh, along the street. And then uh, think how kind of, you know, shops are placed, shops and stores are placed within your own town. I'm going to draw this guy up until there. So that's going to give me a nice big block of commercial to start off with. Meanwhile, we still have lots of residential demand, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and pull that in. Oh, there's also one thing that I need to talk to you guys about. So right now you can see that we are making a monumental loss. And if we come into our economy tab and we check out um, our expenses, we can see that we're spending a whole bunch on water and electricity. And if we have a look at how much we are actually producing, you can see that we require 2 megawatts and we are producing 40, which is way, way too many. In fact, it's 20 times as much, isn't it? So we're going to come into our economy tab and we're going to drop these little budget markers. If you are playing with the day and night cycle, then you will also need to drop the night version as well. But for this particular tutorial, I'm not playing with day and night cycle. And I'm going to drop the water budget as well. And as we play the game, we will notice that these two figures here for electricity and water will begin to fall dramatically. And that's going to save us a whole bunch of money each week. It just means that we're not going to eat into the deficit that we have. So, uh, you know, it can, it can be a nice little way just to save a bit of money. 
Okay, so the commercial starting to come in now. Very exciting indeed. Uh, let's get in some more houses here. So uh, wait for our guys to grow up. And again, I can also prepare just by putting in four here and uh, four here, leaving one little tile along the side for the road to carry on expanding into. Getting some nice little uh, smaller houses along the side here as well. But, uh, yeah, it is a uh, nice little suburbia beginning to develop. Oh, and we also now have a little bit of industrial demand, which is very nice. So with our industrial sector, we have this big main road flowing through the side, and you'll notice that as I zone, I am leaving the tile on the main road empty. And what that is going to do is just ensure that people don't stop and start on this road right near the entrance, because I want it to, to remain uh, very fluid and quite fast. And again, you can see I'm going to be doing uh, kind of the same things along here, doing some big 4x4 zonings. And uh, we'll slowly just watch the town come together. Yeah, don't worry, we're, we're still making our loss right now. We're still getting our initial tax payers into the city. It's, uh, it's, it's, it is a growing process, so I assure you. But we, uh, we will get there. And uh, this will give you a really nice solid start to go and expand as well. Uh, just a little plug whilst we are waiting for the uh, city to keep developing here. Um, if you like my style of videos, kind of a slower, calmer approach, I run a main series called the City Skylines Build Guide, um, which starts out as a tutorial let's play and moves into the kind of inspirational let's play as the city develops and you guys kind of catch along with what we're doing. Then we build some really nice stuff in there. Um, it's mostly unmodded, just a few kind of detailing mods, uh, such as more beautification. Uh, but there's no move it, there's no road anarchy, it's all very much console player friendly. Uh, so if you guys want to check that out, there will be a playlist link in the description below. Uh, if that sounds like uh, a good time. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on zoning up here now. We'll just, we'll just take it nice and slowly together. Uh, let's have a little look. So we know we're going to be carrying on this grid pattern over here uh, when we hit the money for the roads. So we'll carry on doing our little 4x4s four here. And these guys have grown in now, so we can do it there and here. We'll leave enough room for this road to come through. It's all very symmetrical right now, but uh, don't worry, we will throw in some different shapes as we kind of uh, come to the river here and make a little bit of a river front to kind of break out of a grid pattern. But uh, for starting out, I'd say uh, grid patterns, are, are, they, are, they are really great. They're, they're very uh, noob friendly. Okay. So you notice that we have four tiles here. However, I'm just going to zone a little three by three. Well, not three by three. It's three deep, isn't it? It's three by like twenty. <laughs> um, but I'm going to leave a tile free at the back because I'm going to put a little pathway through here and make a little bit of a park land, which will be nice. So I'm going to do a little bit more zoning. And that's just going to help people get around a little easier. I'm also going to delete this guy and save a bit of uh, room for my path to come through and that's going to allow people to move back and to between the high street it'll be a little while yet before we unlock paths but uh, it will come don't worry oh look and we are now making money we now have enough taxpayers in the city and uh, these guys are complaining so this little icon right here if we come out of our zoning tool and click on the building it says not enough workers so we need more population so let's carry on zoning Carry on zoning up all these population squares I've been planning. Oh, and there's the first milestone. Wonderful. So with this, we become a little hamlet of a population of 440, and we're going to unlock taxes, loans, garbage, healthcare, education, and campus areas. If you are playing without the campus DLC, this will just say education, and a whole bunch of new buildings that correspond to those things. So first thing to do, pause the game. I'm going to finish off my zoning here, and let's take a look. So we unlock taxes, let's go into our economy tab and open up taxes. You see here we can actually set the tax rate for each of these respective type of zonings. Now what you want to do here, 12% for every single one of them. We obviously can't set the high density version yet because we haven't unlocked them, but 12% will ensure a much higher income but a steady demand. If you zoom these all the way up to the top, your demand will go through the floor. No one will want to pay 29% tax. 12% is pretty much the golden marker. 
We're going to come into loans and we're going to have a look at Silver Sunset Bank who want to give us £20,000. Thank you very much. We will take that. <laughs> Uh, and we are going to also have a look at some of the other stuff that we had placed in as well. So, we also unlocked a landfill site. That's great. Let's get some landfill in here because our sims are going to start piling up and living in garbage. And that is not at all what we want to happen. So, landfill is under our industrial tab. And it obviously produces noise. And it, sims just don't like living next to landfill. You know, you wouldn't want to live next to landfill, so neither would your sims. So I'm going to place this within my industrial area, of course, uh, and let's just find a nice little spot for this. So they, they're going to want to get all over the city, so I'm thinking giving them good access to this main road here, and uh, alongside the roundabout as well for when we eventually expand over there. Uh, we want to give them a nice easy access somewhere, so I think I'm going to draw off just a very small lane like this, and then up to there. And then I'm going to grab a landfill site, and I'm going to just plop them in just like that. We do also unlock the recycling centre uh, which is a little more expensive and we will use recycling centres eventually to empty out our landfill sites once they become full but for right now the budget is a little slim and we can't quite take that hit. Okay so wonderful. Uh, we also got a big cash influx from uh, hitting that milestone so I'm going to go ahead and zone up some more residential tiles because I know you know, we need to keep plowing on through these population milestones, so we need those people in. I'm just going to carry on this very simple grid pattern, you know, out by 10, across by 10, and back up by 10. It looks very boring, but as a noob's guide, it's pretty much flawless. And that should do me just about right. We are watered up, we are fine. So we can play the game now, and I'm going to carry on my little 4x4 zonings. Some people might find this tedious, you don't need to do it. It doesn't take that much longer to do. And then, uh, oh, we need to uh, make sure we don't disconnect our power. That would, would be bad news bears. Make sure that they're linked up with the blue auras. Otherwise our, our water buildings will lose power and people will become very unhappy indeed. Okay, so let's just sit back and watch the town grow for a little bit. We also have another shameless plug. If you like, maybe you're stuck for a little bit of inspiration of what to place in your city next. There will also be a link below to another series of mine called Modular Builds where we look at kind of tile for tile builds of what you can use to make kind of educational stuff, public transport stuff. Go ahead and check out the playlist uh, and you'll kind of see what I mean. Uh, you guys have been really enjoying it. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that you guys will also enjoy it as well for the new people watching this video. And uh, here we go. Okay, so these guys have all filled in. Let's get some more in here. Slowly growing, and we're now just having all these nice even 4x4 four four lots beginning to appear around the town, which is wonderful. Now we did also unlock a school, which you may have noticed. And we will place that in a moment as well once we expand our high street a little further down. So rather than just carrying on in a straight line here, I'm going to now throw in a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to grab my curved road tool. And I'm going to come out by a distance of 10. And again, you know, that second blue line is appearing. So when we're at that blue line, we know that we are at 10. And we're going to click and then move up again to that 10 marker. And that's going to give me a really nice curve uh, in the road. It's going to throw a different shape in there. And we can do some nice things with this corner as well. Okay. And then I'm going to draw him out by, say, another 10. Just like that. Okay. Let's get our commercial expanding. I want to keep the high street going. And uh, I'm going to place my school along here. And uh, we'll probably place uh, a school kind of around here as well. You know, rather than just placing your main buildings on a, on a regular road, it can be nice to make a little more fuss out of them. Make them feel all important, you know, to take them out for dinner. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of residential demand right now, so I'm going to... Uh, expand my industrial estate again. And again, just keep coming out like blocks of 10. It's very noob friendly. You know, you can come up with your own road designs, but this is pretty much solid. And now you can see we want to alternate these now. So this one, I want to be flowing that way. And this one, that way. 
and then that way, and then that way. Now you can see how it kind of alternates with one another, and that's just going to keep this main road uh, flowing really nicely. You, you'll see how it works as uh, the industrial estate expands. Uh, let's get some more guys in here. Again, I'm just going to keep that nice, perfect 4x4 zoning going to satisfy this industrial demand. Pretty sure we'll need some more water here actually, won't we? Yes, we will. And we can measure that distance to 460 again. And we know that we're going to be uh, pretty much perfect. Okay, so our big industrial chunky boys are beginning to develop. Very, very nice. Let's keep expanding them. That's much more money for us, more tax, which is always, always appreciated. Do it that one, that's a five, that's a four by five. And again, I'm just gonna be keeping that main road free of zoning. And we'll kind of see how this develops. But again, we have more enormous uh, residential demand. Let's carry on expanding together. Uh, hopefully you guys are kind of playing along with this and uh, doing it with me. That will probably be the best way to learn. Okay. So now I've got some more to expand. I'm going to come in and keep my grid pattern going on. Okay. So I'm just carrying on expanding my little grid pattern here. and Everyone's having a great time. Again, you know, we're kind of coming up to a little bit of an awkward shape here now. So we're going to do something nice with our road layout. We have a little bit of money left over and we're about to hit the next milestone. So I'm going to come out and snap onto this point right here. We can see where the road guideline comes out. So this is just at the corner. Again, you know, this grid is carried on expanding. I'm going to come down and just throw in a couple of different shapes um, for my town to take place with. Rather than just carrying on the grid, I'm now going to throw a little angle in. And uh, I may want this road to link up with one over here as well. So I'm going to draw in some tiling that runs parallel this road so I get more tiles along the back of these shops right here and I'm going to bring this guy out a little more so now I have a lot of crossroads here and then bring this guy in and then I'm going to grab my freeform tool snap onto him let's make a nice gentle curve like that so you know we're just starting to introduce some new shapes and breaking out of that pattern that's the best way to do it just play with these little tools and do very slight adjustments at a time and you'll just start to develop uh, a couple of new patterns, which will always uh, always be nice. Okay, uh, so I want more commercial along here now. I have a big 4x4 over here. Oh, and uh, we hit the next milestone, which gives us a new tile to play with. Districts and policies, which we'll cover. Emergency services and police, which is very important. And then a couple of policies as well, which uh, the green city stuff here, well, we will mention it, but it's not majorly important. Okay, so the firehouse. As we look into our fire tab, we can see that there are buildings that are red and some that are very quite red. So your industrial stuff is very susceptible to catching on fire just because of the nature of what it is. So I want my firehouse to have good access both into the residential and industrial. So I'm going to place my little firehouse uh, right on the corner here. So he has good access around the rest of the industrial estate, and he also has a nice clear run down into this place over here. Okay. So next one is the police. However, with your police station, you know you can just plop it on a road like this, and that's fine. It's not an issue, but it can be nice to make a little more fuss out of your more important buildings. So what I'm going to do now is show you guys how you can make a little town centre, you know, something a little more fun. So from where this big main road bends around, we're going to come ahead and grab this first node point here, and just using our regular old two lane roads, we're going to come up by a distance of 160. We're going to come out by 160, and then down by 160. So I'm making a very small loop. And then with this point here, I'm going to come out by 160 again, across by 440, and then down into the road like that. So straight away, this is already looking a lot more interesting. However, there are too many traffic lights here. So if we come into our info views and check our routes, and come into junctions, we can see we get a little traffic lights appearing. 
what we're going to do is turn off the traffic lights at all these junctions that we just placed just by clicking on them and probably one here as well and then what I'm going to do is just ask all these people that are joining the main road from these smaller roads these guys need to stop and give way to the main road if you're playing with traffic manager you can do this without going into traffic routes uh, you know you guys all know how to use the mod uh, but if you're playing without then that is how you do it okay so our police station is going to keep our sims safe it costs 480 dollars a week to maintain our budget can more than take that at the moment so let's go ahead and place this boy in i'm going to place him right at the tip of this new road that we just built in i can see now i'm out of money so i'm coming back into my loans and with that milestone we also got a new loan so i'm going to take it and i can now pay this one back i'm going to pay it and then take it again and that's going to give me a little extra spending cash so we're back up to 70 grand now we're not two different types of school if you're not playing without green cities then you won't have the community school you will just have the regular elementary and uh, they both do the same thing apart from the community school costs a little more and looks a little nicer and uh, i'm just going to place this thing right on the corner of this road that i just built yeah so already rather than just placing them alongside this road and they just kind of become another building we can see a little bit of a, a town center developing around here right now let's go ahead and make sure that these guys are watered up we want to make sure that they are going to remain happy and then we'll also make sure that they are hooking through with power yes they are so you can see how the power jumps from one building to the next like this gap here so we don't need power lines and then let's go and get some uh, some more zoning in here let's carry on our little commercial high street that's developing Get some stuff in here. Maybe a little around the back as well over there. And I'm going to save some room here for some nice park land. You know, I don't want to be filling it all in. We will uh, develop some park stuff as well. So all of my industrial people have come in now, filling the rest of them. You know, hopefully you guys are finding this start uh, nice and useful. And uh, This is one of uh, a design I've come up with on my own. You know, I was playing about with it last night. I don't want to uh, continue to kind of use Imperial Jedi's work, but you know if you guys want to use that start to the city It is still totally valid It's a it's a great start, but I want to promote my own stuff now uh, Due to the number of subscribers we're currently at and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can enjoy my take on things A little bit more. It's also a very long video, so uh, I hope you don't mind that at all uh, Yeah, so we can see we've got these little worker icons appearing around the city and that's because we have enormous residential demand you know people are waiting for jobs so we'll keep making sure that people can come in and then we're just going to keep making a nice tidy little profit here as a city develops aha so this icon means they have no power and you may remember that we reduced our power supply so we were making 20 we now require 23 so let's come back into our economy tab open our budget and we're going to raise the electricity budget by a little and we'll see it it pops up we're now making more and the icons will go away only at the start of the game do you really need to micromanage your budget like that um, the next time we run out of power we'll more than likely just place another power station uh, because the budget will be able to afford that and then yeah you just kind of keep placing power stations as you need them okay let's take a little mooch around right now nice little high street developing here Hopefully you guys can see how uh, the industrial traffic is totally avoiding our residential and commercial areas. They are coming on and over this bridge, heading in and out of town at will. They're not giving any traffic to our guys over here. And you can see how this one-way system is uh, distributing trucks around. And they can come in at certain points and enter and exit. It's very nice. It's very nice indeed. Okay, again, enormous residential demand, so I'm, uh, have we run out again? Yes, we have. Okay, let's put our budget right up to the top. 100%. Well, not right to the top. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty much very nearly out of power. Aha, so this thing right here. This is a good time to talk about this. So this guy, he is sick, and the icon tells us what is wrong with him. So he has these little headphones on. 
that means that's noise pollution. So if we have a little look at our infographics and look at the headphones, we can see that these red centers are obviously kind of epicenters for noise. And uh, you know, people don't like to live near noisy high streets. So this guy here, he's a little too close. So I'm just gonna unzone him and then get rid. And that's fine. And I'll probably delete this guy as well. And uh, we'll make some nice kind of parkland out of this area rather than just leaving it empty when we do eventually unlock them. But I'm going to carry on expanding my grid because uh, we have enormous residential demand and then uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so things are just growing nicely. Fortunately, it's very rainy at the moment. but uh, We can see now that we've got some little... Um, I'm actually going to drop a little bit of uh, commercial zoning right in the middle here as well. Right outside our little police station. And hopefully you guys can see the point. You know, we can tell this is something, even from the bird's eye view, that this thing right here is a little more important. There's a little more rural design going on, and when we do unlock the uh, the parks and recreation stuff, um, in the next milestone, I think we'll uh, we'll do some detail in there as well. Okay, so all these guys have come in. It's time for me to fill in the rest. And there we go. There is tiny town. So we have park areas, industry areas, and landscaping. Parks and plazas unlocked. Uh, level two unique buildings. A whole bunch of policies. A lot of this will look different depending on what DLC you are and aren't playing without. Um, so just bear that in mind. And let's take a little look. So we have unlocked high schools now. And we can see that we have... Um, we actually have more demand for elementary students as well. That's uh, interesting. We'll have to place some more in. Okay, so let's make a little point for our high school. So I think I kind of want it focused around the high street again. Because you know as the, the town expands this is going to be... A nice little central point. So uh, let's do that. Let's join a little road up here and then place our high school probably just behind like this. Okay. It's not too bad looking. Uh, what else do we unlock? Let's have a look at some more buildings. Awesome, it's a whole bunch of new park assets. This is going to be really fun. High schools, libraries, basketball courts. Yeah, lots of, unlocked a lot of cool stuff here. Okay, so let's have a little look at our parks and plazas. So these are going to be great for detailing uh, your areas. And I'm going to place in a couple of things. So there are three assets. The small park, the park with trees, and the large playground that you can draw uh, paths out of and kind of make your own custom park with it, I guess. Uh, so that is what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to place one of these small parks in. You see all these little people get happy. It's because they like parks. And I'm going to grab a gravel path And this guy. You can see now that we can have all these little kind of snap nodes. Let's go ahead and draw this road in. Connect him up. Just like that. Uh, actually, no, we're going to delete that guy right there. Uh, we're going to come into here. And uh, I'll connect him probably just down there, actually. That's going to be a nice little spot. Okay. And then this guy... Right there. So I'm just kind of expanding my road network here. There's power lines. These are no longer needed. Power is sinking through. Okay. So I'm going to draw in a couple of little paths and just kind of expand the uh, the natural shape of this uh, park asset. Just like that. And that's going to help me fill in uh, some little bits of land. Maybe get a little more commercial in along here as well. Uh, satisfy some of that commercial demand. Got a nice big 4x4 four four blocks. And you remember we spoke about paths before. So we're going to do that now. If you are playing with the Park Life DLC, you will have access to something called the Nature Reserve Path with Decorations. This is one of the best looking paths in the game. It's kind of like, you know, it's nice and gravelly, a little bit of grass, some stones, and some nice little kind of like string lights here. Uh, these are really nice for kind of decorating your sidewalks. They're not essential because people can still walk up and down the sidewalk, of course. But it is just a nice little touch. Get some more residential in here as well. Uh, let's carry on with those paths. So remember we save these guys here. And I'm just going to snap onto everything uh, apart from, well, nothing but the grid. Let's hook these guys up right through the middle. 
and then up to the top just like that. So you can see now rather than just leaving that as empty space we've got all these nice little patterns from uh, the paths coming through and uh, we'll begin to see some people use them as the AI picks them up as a faster route around the town. So that's going to start to look really cute. Uh, we can also do the same over here. Let's have a little discussion about detailing. Uh, so let's go ahead and place in another park over here maybe. Uh, what else can we place? Uh, let's maybe have a dog park right on the corner followed by a basketball court. So again we're kind of adding to that town centre feel. There's little parks around here as well. And then I'm going to grab my nature reserve path again. I'm going to turn off all my snapping. When you're playing with kind of weird angles, um, it can sometimes be best to turn off all your path snapping. It just becomes a little bit easier. And I'm going to have a little path that comes through here as well. So again, I'm using that empty space for something, you know. That's going to allow people to uh, move around a little easier as well. And uh, maybe around here, let's, uh, let's put in kind of a nice little park front. Uh, across from our police station and high school. Let's have him right at the middle. He is connecting to the sidewalk there, we can see. Let's have one right behind the police station. One that comes down here. Maybe a little commercial zoning in here too. And uh, let's grab some trees. And we're going to use a nice small tree. Maybe this uh, tree with leaves number two. I'm just going to place in a couple of these little tree assets in each square. Just like this, and we'll kind of take a look at how this looks at the moment. I'll show you some more decorating tips and tricks as well. Um, with part life players, if you come into your nature reserve and grab your nature reserve fence, you will have access to a nice, lovely, rural, small town looking fence. And we're going to place this right in front of our elementary school, and we're going to drop it. We're going to come back into our trees, and then we're just going to place a couple of little trees alongside the front of the in front of the school just like this and already how much better does this little town center look all we did was place a couple of trees and a couple of paths and it just looks so much better it's just got that little small town vibe to it you know and that took us like what like two three minutes if that uh, yeah and you start to see all these little people using the paths it makes it look a lot more alive and we can probably get some trees in here as well. Let's drop some more in. Just like this. You know, and they're the same trees that are from the asset as well, so they kind of blend in and uh, just match a little. And yeah, that's going to be a nice little introduction to parks and paths, which is going to be sweet. Uh, we do have more elementary school demand, so I'm going to drop another elementary school in right here. That's maybe a little bit close to the to the old one. Let's uh, let's move him over to this side of uh, the town over here, and let's do something similar. I'm going to draw out by uh, make sure our snapping is on. Draw out by 160, and come down to this guy, and let's make a little kind of little nest for my uh, for my school to to lie upon. Again, let's do something similar with uh, the nature reserve path. I'm going to come in, just draw a box with the fence, all our snapping is off, it'll make it easier to place. And maybe let's use a different kind of tree here, let's go for some nice colourful ones. Maybe a couple of rocks. If you would like to learn how to detail, we do a lot of this kind of stuff um, in my build guide series, go ahead and check it out. Uh, if you want to kind of see this in, in action a little more, maybe a little bit of overgrowth in here as well. Like that. Not already, you know, it's just a much more interesting introduction to what is an important building within your town. And, uh, I hope you guys can kind of appreciate it. Obviously, the fences come with part life, uh, but you can still do something similar if you are playing with the base absolute vanilla game. And, uh, yeah, our town is slowly, slowly coming to life right now. And uh, we'll kind of finish off with a way to kind of expand away from this shape. So obviously right now we are kind of moving more and more towards the river as we expand and we're going to need to do something about that. So I'm thinking a riverfront, 
You know, there's going to be nice shops there. Maybe some unique buildings in there as well. It's going to be very, very special indeed. And uh, we're going to make sure that all our snapping is on. So I'm going to draw a nice riverfront main road. Probably about there. Something like that. It runs parallel with the river. Get it up to there. Uh, this guy can maybe hopefully connect in. Yeah, there we go. So he's going to hook in like that. That's going to be sweet. This guy's going to go over there, and then our our residential grid can hook into this as well. Let's, um, let's not hook that one in. He can hook in. Let's delete him a little further there. You know, just like this. Looks like there's a little spot actually to hook in right here. You know, just keep playing with your road pattern. And uh create a few little hookup points and then right along here you know we can maybe have some commercial you know uh, you could specialize the commercial here even so let's have a little look at districts and areas and um, so districts and areas you paint them out in kind of this little paintbrush tool uh, and they act as ways to apply certain policies to areas these can be uh, changing the way the sims behave, changing the way the buildings look, um, a variety of different options. So for example, you remember if you're playing with green cities, we unlocked the local and organic produce commercial specialization. I can apply this to this district that I just painted out. And this means that any commercial that I place within this district is going to be specialized as organic and local produce. Uh, it's going to look different. It's going to look really nice kind of along the riverfront here. And then um, it's going to be really, really great looking. So we'll get some of that in. Of course, we want to make sure these guys are watered up. Yes, they pretty much are, apart from those right there. Wonderful. So we'll wait for that to, to develop. You get these nice little uh, green buildings that are, are plopping up alongside the river. And then, yeah. Lots more room for residential expansion in and around here. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be a nice little finish to the city, I think, guys. Yeah, so we will we will leave it there, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. This is a really solid start to your city. You can kind of I'll just leave the uh, thing I'm playing here at three speed. So you've got a really nice simple uh, introduction to the city where your industrial traffic you can see it all filtering off separate from your residential and commercial. They are doing their relevant jobs within the industrial area and then they are filtering away back out into the highway. Uh, our little paths here are getting some use which is always cute. Again these ones right by the roadside aren't particularly useful but they are nice for filling in uh, some gaps. We've got lots of people using them so you know we're making the town more walkable. People can move in and around as they see fit. Uh, we've got some nice kind of uh, parks and plazas over here, which is looking really sweet. Did I not delete this elementary school? No, I did not delete that one. Don't have that one there. <laughs> uh, you know that I'm making people happy and cheering people up, which is always great. And we've looked at how you can make a little bit of a town centre with some different angled roads and some nice shapes just to bring it to life a little more you know it looks a little bit more important you can see it from the bird's eye view it isn't just placed along a main road like this like could you imagine if this main road would just had our police station school and high school it would just look boring but this at least in my opinion it looks a little better and uh, you know got nice people moving around uh, using the paths and it just looks very nice and very active and uh, yeah it's an idea you guys can use to go ahead and kind of expand your cities and we've also got some nice green commercial developing along the riverfront here uh, and this will start to look really nice as you kind of develop the riverfront maybe with a nice riverfront park and some waterside keys uh, for example you could come ahead and grab your water structure uh, grab the waterside key and then just paint this guy out up to a point where he likes there we go no and then maybe drop in um one of the park life city parks along this river front here now that looked really nice to have it kind of looking out over the river and, uh, and yeah this serves as a really nice start to the city you can kind of just get a nice little overview right now we're making a really nice healthy profit of 2369 
We're a little way off the uh, the next milestone of Boomtown, uh, which unlocks your public transport and stuff. And then, and then you can really kind of get going in your city once you hit that milestone. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys do enjoy it. Um, you can also, once you've kind of expanded this pattern, if you wanted to, like you know, box off into into the next area, then you could do. Um, but you've also got this little point here to expand from. So uh, let me come out of the, the world view. Looks like we've run out of power a little bit, yes we have. Let's place another power station. Uh, let's just drop it in for right here, right now, since we're about to finish. You know, you've got... Um, make sure that the power goes away. There you go. So this little roundabout here, you know, you've got another snap node here. Uh, you've got a whole bunch of industry over here, there's ore. And a little bit of forestry. And you can do whatever you want with this side as well. It really is, um, you know, kind of a template for you to take in whichever direction that you like. Um, if you did enjoy it, a like below is very much appreciated. Equally as much, if you didn't enjoy it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. As I mentioned in the video, I run two other series called the City Skylines Build Guide, which is my main Let's Play where we move through all the milestones of a city and make some really beautiful looking stuff. It is very console player friendly, so check it out if you like. Links are in the description. And also, maybe you're stuck with something to build in your city and you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know what to build, I'm just kind of repeating the same pattern. Then our modular build series is perfect for you. We are doing kind of tile for tile builds. Of low density neighborhoods, downtown plazas, lots of different things, monorail interchanges, uh, school and tram parks, which is really nice. Lots of different things you can place in your city, so check out that playlist in the description below as well. Otherwise, guys, that is going to be it for the updated version of how to start your city for 2020. Uh, let me know if you use it, if you'd like to send me a screenshot then you can do so at my Twitter handle, which will be linked in the description below. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching. Sorry the video was so long. This has been, like, over an hour. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful. I love you all. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.